Hello, this is Deborah with Black Education TV. I have a message for my brothers and my sisters, black men and black women. There's something we need to understand, and we need to understand it fast. Together, we will fall. If divided, we remain. As we were going about our day, it's like that message came to me that together we will fall if divided we remain because this is what we see happening already. Unfortunately, too many of us have been tricked into believing that we are just fine. Um, some on an individual basis. You know, you'll have those of us who um, feel like they're doing okay. You may live in the best neighborhood and under the best circumstances and you feel like you are doing just fine. While I'm speaking, I'm just going to show you some of my, my little cucumbers here that are coming in. We've been really throwing down on the cucumber lemonade, um, a recipe that my daughter Sophia came up with. And it's been really off the chain. All of these fat cucumbers all over the place. Anyone who knows us and have been watching us over the years knows that we love gardening. Okay. there's We've been taking off tons and tons and... Um, <clears throat> cucumbers um, I would call one of those plants that that is the gift that keeps on giving okay also with the beets we've been growing a lot of beets as well and making beet juice and that too has been off the chain but anyway back to the subject at hand um, if divided we remain together we will fall that's just the way it's going to be, family, because it's set up like this in any community, whether it's Asian, Caucasian, Latin, Latino, or whatever. Um, when people stick together, Mexicans, when people tend to stick together, they do better, you see. And it's not to say that's not without problems, because problems do arise, but problems can be resolved. But, in case you hadn't noticed, we seem to be the only racial group in the world, on the planet, that is hell-bent on being divided against one another. We're trying to unite with everyone else, but we don't put forth that same effort to unite with ourselves, with each other. We just don't do it. It seems like the, the opposite is happening, where our efforts seem to be geared towards dividing one another. I did a video where I was talking about Ghana, and I'll probably discuss that later in another video, but when you look at the comments, when you look at the comments, the hate that our own people have towards each other, it is off the chain, whack, and crazy. That's something I could never get used to. You know how people say, well, I'm used to it. It's been happening for so long, I'm used to it. That's something I could never get used to. I'm still trying to wrap my brain around the kind of foolishness that I see in the so-called black community. And to me, it's elementary to determine that if we keep going in the way that we're going, that things are only going to get worse. That's elementary. It does not take rocket science to show that if we continue in this path, that things are going to get worse and worse. You, don't, you do not need to be a rocket, rocket scientist to figure that out. But yet and still, we are convinced that this is how you handle things. Most of us think that the solution to fixing us is outside of us, meaning that if we merge with others, that this will make us better. And even if you don't think that, some of us think that if we merge with others, on an individual basis that, oh, you will be taken care of. You think that you can abandon ship. It doesn't work like that. I'm sorry. You are who you are in the flesh. So-called black person, Israelite, whatever you identify as, you're always going to be whoever you are, regardless to what group of people you try to merge with, thinking that you're escaping who you are. It's just not going to happen. You will never escape who you are. Everything that is slated for you is going to happen to you and for you, regardless to who you dwell with, you see. 
But until our minds get set on trying to fix us, we are going to continue to experience this worldwide shame that we see happening. Other nations will continue to have their foot on our necks because they see that we are pathetic. They see us as pathetic. I've spoken before in the past how there were various talks about us among other groups and they say that we are a non-issue. Do you know what that means? Black man and black woman, those who refuse to come together. When other races or nations call you a non-issue, that is as low as you can go. Now, I see your comments. I see many of your comments who say, well, I don't care what these other nations think. Yes, you do. You know how I can tell you care? Because all in my comment section, I see F this group, F that group. This group is this, that, and the other, blah, blah, blah. You just vent all of your frustrations in the comment section on any video dealing with racial issues. But you say you don't care what they think. But all your comments are geared around how you feel about them. As if you think that's going to solve the problems we have with these other nations. Your comments only show your weakness. It shows that you are deeply affected when you go on these little tangents. Don't think for one minute that these people are somewhere saying, oh, those comments just ruined my day. No, they just laugh and they continue on their merry little way, doing well, feeding their families, formulating their futures, doing all those things. While you're in the comment section, talking about how much you hate them. Now, they can do that. They can express all of those things, how they feel about us, what they think about us. But that's not going to affect their life in one way. And when I say that, I mean in the natural. Of course, spiritually, there will be consequences. On the Day of Judgment, when they stand before the Most High, yeah, of course, we know they will have to face Him with all of those comments and statements and hatred. But as for you... All it does is occupy brain space and it makes it that much harder for you to elevate yourself right now, right here, in this life. And I don't mean elevate as far as material things, but I mean on a spiritual level. There were times in my life where I was consumed by some of those things. And I'm not completely free from them either, family. I'm not completely free from those things. But the Most High has shown me something very dear, something that has helped me over the past year. And for that, I am grateful. He's shown me something about how we deal with these situations. Yes, we must talk about these things in a productive way so that those who are in the dark and blind and lost as to what's happening can experience some type of understanding because some of our people don't understand what's happening. But the way we deal with these things in the carnal, that determines how effective your witness is going to be. That determines how effective your witness is going to be. When your whole conversation is centered around your enemies and how much you can't stand them, while at the same time you're doing nothing to fix the problems you're having with your own people, it's like you're stuck in the middle of no man's land. Many of us feel that way. Some are put that way, put in that position because they can't dwell with our people or with, with other people. Some are that way because they are just hateful on both sides. They can't stand our people. They can't stand the other people. They can't stand anybody. They can't even stand themselves. Some time ago, I did a video about the Cats 22 about being black. Now, most of us, well, I'm not going to say most of us, but many of us that are in the truth find ourselves in that position. We find ourselves being in the catch-22 where we know that we can't join with our oppressors, but we also know that we cannot join with our people because the end result of both is disaster. Because when you're dealing with unrepentant black or unrepentant white, it doesn't matter. It all works out to be the same. Unrepentant people cannot be trusted. Simple as that. 
they cannot be trusted. So this cry that we make, this appeal that we are making to our people and to our, to our selves of trying to get an understanding about how to love each other and how to deal with one another properly, how to fix our situation. We have to continue to do this. We can't just count it off. We can't count it out. We can't give up. But at the same time, we still have to be very cautious. We have to be very cautious. Like I said, family, together we all fail. If divided, we remain. If our men who are the heads don't get it in their heads that there's a certain way to lead, you will continue to be led by those outside of us. If our women don't get it in their heads that you cannot follow after the ways of the heathen, this is what's going to continue to happen in our communities. See, everybody else is depending on the other person. The women are depending on the men. The men are depending on the women to get themselves together. They're like, oh, you get yourself together. But, but no one is saying, look, I as a woman or I as a man have to get, have got to get myself together. No one is saying that. But everyone is telling the other group that they must get themselves together. Well, biblically so. And I know some of my listeners don't believe in the Bible. That's okay. But even if you don't believe in the Bible, even the universe tells you that the man is the head. And if the head is out of order, the whole body is out of order. When you are sick and you have a headache, I don't care how good your toe is feeling or how good your finger is feeling, how good your thigh is feeling. If that head is sick, that whole body is out of commission. And so that is what's going on in the so-called black community. The man, the head, is sick, is out of order. And so therefore the whole black community is out of order because our headship is not doing so well. It's suffering from a migraine. And we need to do everything. Now women, check this out. Check this out. We need to do everything we can. But check this out, women. You are a part of that body. Although the man is the head, you are a part of that body. So imagine within your own body if you are experiencing a migraine. Aren't you going to tend to that migraine? Aren't you going to do everything in your power to try to heal that body of that sickness? Because if that head is sick, the finger is going to be sick. The toes are going to be sick. The leg, the arms, the ears, everything is going to be out of commission. So this is why the scripture tells us, daughters of Zion, that we are to cry out for the men of Judah. We are to cry out for the men of Judah because the men of Judah, not all of them, but many of them are out of order. And because the head is out of order, the whole body is out of order. Collectively, in the so-called black community, we are out of order. Even those of you who think you have escaped and you've moved out to other areas and you don't deal with your own people, you're out of order too. You're out of order. You can't tell yet. But sooner or later, you get that wake-up call. They bring it to your remembrance. That you are not them. That comes up. There is much work to do. And I know many of you are tired of hearing that. But as long as we are in this position or this place to where we need to be fixed. This cry has got to continue to be made. Because I also know this. That the longer the head stays sick, the body is going to get weaker and weaker. Till eventually it's going to fall down and die. So that's why together we fail. If divided, we remain family. We've got work to do. Whether you will hear or whether you will forbear. That is up to you. But one thing that I can say to those of you who say, well, look, I'm trying and I'm doing the best I can. 
my word of encouragement to you is that there is always a remnant. So despite what the masses decide to do, there will be a remnant. And I thank the Most High for that. There will be a remnant of us that will escape the things that are coming upon this earth. Those of us who really, truly understand what is happening. There will be a way made as long as we keep that understanding near and dear to our hearts. As long as we understand that this obstacle course we call life that's not going to cut us any breaks if we continue in the wrong path. But if you switch things up and you begin to travel the right road, every good and perfect thing will come to you. But as long as you remain hateful, bitter, full of strife, envy, jealousy, all of these things, nothing good is going to come to you. Okay, family, with that, I will say shalom.